Hello and welcome back to the Grand Finals, the 10th event of the 2019 Formula 4 Southeast Asia Championship, fueled of course by Petron. As always, my name is Aaron Thompson, we're coming to you now for the final race, the 40th race in the season, but before then, a quick walk down the pit lane. Hi guys, I'm Ivan Peklin, I race for car number 23, the yellow car, the only one in, the, in this race, so I'm really excited to be here, here in Sepang in Malaysia, and uh, I want to show good the pace on the race, so let's see. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ivan. Now up to race control to rush the start of race four, the final race here this weekend, and the final race of the season. Down we go the main straight with uh, looks like Frederico Peters perhaps trying to make a move. And on the inside, Luke Allen perhaps not getting the best start. And just behind the likes of Han at the front of the kit, we got uh, Sammy Merkatov, of course, the rookie drivers at the front, having to drive down in the wet into turn one. Fantastic start to the race here, ladies and gentlemen, the Spang International. Coming around turn one, now you can see that everyone's managed to get through so far, no issue. Looks like Ivan Pecklin going up the inside, maybe colliding with the orange number 57 of Fred Peterson. There's been a big lift indeed. The yellow car of Ivan Pecklin and the orange car of seems Ricky Capo have both uh, spun around. Ricky seems to have got going again, but it does seem like Ivan Pecklin has stalled. No, indeed, managed to get going as well, but there is debris on track, so we may be forced to uh, bring out the safety car to allow the marshals to clean away the uh, what seems to be the uh, front wing and plates. Let's go quiet for just a moment while we check out the race control to see uh, how the race will continue. Coming around turn eight now and uh, down into turn, sorry, turn seven and turn eight, you have the red cars of uh, of uh, Shihab Al Habzi and uh, Frederico Peters, of course, side by side. But then we have Moise Mishafer back to the front. You have Elias Pan in the red, number 58, alongside Semi uh, Meganov coming into turn nine. Though it looks like Moise Mishafer came out badly on the exit of turn eight and is now beached down the straight into turn nine. Everyone going sideways coming through turn 10. Frederico Peters going very wide as three cars go side by side into turn 10, cross back on each other and trying to go up the inside at turn, uh, at turn, <laughs> turn 10, <laughs> turn 11. Fantastic driving in this. It's a little bit squirrely on the exit for the for the several drivers in uh, in participation in this particular uh, battle as well as we come around side by side now through turn 11. This is why we love racing in the rain at Sepang International Circuit because it turns every single corner into an overtaking opportunity, especially turn 11, which is just unbelievable to watch side by side cars going through that section of the track. We come down the back straight now uh, past uh, corner 14 and down into turn 15. It looks like Max Hart side by side with Amir Harris. Max, of course, the car on the left hand side of the screen seems to have gotten a better exit going down the uh, rear the, the back straight a little bit faster than the than the man uh, from Malaysia the the Malaysian rookie Amir Harris as we come into turn 15 now though Moise and Schaffer just seem to be continuing on track so it must have been Ivan Pecklin we saw in the yellow car uh, beached at the exit of I believe it was turn 8 that's uh, terrible news for the Ukrainian rookie. It was his uh, second outing in a Formula car, though, here at uh, Sepang International Circuit with F4 SEA this weekend, uh, but it hasn't gone exactly as he planned. But, you know, it, it, it isn't always then that's racing, and you've got to make up for it and come back and uh, make everything happen again. As we come down into turn one now, you can see that Moise Mustafa is trying to go all the way around the outside here on uh, what would seem to be Shihab Al Habsi. Can't quite make out the numbers, unfortunately, but coming down into turn two, you can see that uh, Max Hart has definitely secured that position from Amir Harris. That would put Max up into P7, just ahead of Harris. Fantastic session so far as Elias Lepanen now, who's, uh, let's pay a little bit of love to Elias Lepanen. He's led the race from the from the first lap, putting himself on pole position by virtue of his second fastest time from qualifying and uh, keeping himself there by virtue of his excellent drive and race craft. Coming through turn five now, though, you can see that all the drivers are a little bit too far back to make anything happen, at least at the front of the pack. But uh, on screen at the moment, we've got the Portuguese rookie, the orange number seven of Frederico Peters. Down into turn six, got a lift off, I imagine, quite a lot here as Moise Mushafa seems to try to go on an outside line 
behind, maybe trying to get out of the spray kicked up by the red number 34 car belonging to Shihab Al Habzi. And that seems to have worked out very well for him because he has definitely closed in on the Omani driver as we come down into turn eight. Moise again taking a wider line and seems to get a much better exit. And now the gap between the two drivers, almost impossible to distinguish as we come down into turn nine. Nice long straight here, about two, three, four hundred uh, meters. And it looks like Moise Mshapper has this in the bag. He's going to hit the breaking point just a second ago and uh, round we go. But uh, Shihab Al Habsi getting the better exit here, although they're both a little bit squirrely. Shihab goes around the outside at turn turn, takes the position back, and that's uh, that's the, that's the Pang International Circuit in uh, one sentence, ladies and gentlemen. It's a switchback. You get the advantage at the first corner and at the second corner, then you're at the disadvantage. And of course, the driver can take position back from you, and we see it again and again. And uh, Shihab Al Habsi and Moiz Mushafa just showed us uh, the definition of it. Coming down into turn 11 now, though, this is uh, again an overtaking opportunity in the wet and down into turn 13 here. And this is a little bit of a confusing sector of the track, turn 13 and 14, almost the one corner, but Moise Mushafa at least uh, knows exactly what's going on here because it seems he's got the perfect exit and he's already uh, coming alongside or not quite. He's going to duck in behind Shihab Al Habzi and look at the spray coming off that, the back of that car, ladies and gentlemen. That's actually the, uh, the tires are doing that. They're designed in such a way to get the water away from the rubber compound so you have as much rubber in contact with the ground and uh, not uh, not having to deal with the water as possible. As it looks like Shihab gets a little bit squirrely on the exit, but seems to have managed to make it work for himself because he's still alongside Moise Mushafra. As they come down the main straight, seems like Shihab got the better exit because he's pulling, 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 and he's back into his original position, ladies and gentlemen, as we come down into turn one. Now let's have a look at the lap times on the leaderboard. Of course, Elias Panin at the front of the pack, followed very closely by Sami Megantop in the orange and the red number seven cars. Moise Shaffer tries once again to go around the outside at turn one, and this time it looks like he's going to make it stick. He pushes uh, Shihab quite wide indeed there, coming out or coming into turn two, I should say, and he says thank you very much, and uh, seems to now be able to walk away with it from uh, from corner three and have to uh, fight to to find the man in front of him now, uh, Frederico Peters. Fred, of course, is doing a 2.41.797, so he's lapping faster than both uh, Moise and Shihab, but you've got to keep in mind that these two drivers have been battling for position, so they're driving defensively, and unfortunately for Moise Mushafri, he just went a little bit wide coming out of turn four. And that's going to give Shihab all he needs to come back at the Malaysian Rocket in the yellow number 13 car and uh, try and try and take back his position. Coming down through turn five now, lift off here into turn six. And let's have a quick replay of the action at the start of the race before we get back to the battle for P6. Looks like everyone got away without any significant issues coming down the main straight. You can see a stream of cars, of course, <laughs> in this weather, almost impossible to make out who's who. You actually can't see that there's one car in the middle of your screens or three cars in the middle of your screens at the moment. We come down into turn one, though. Everyone jumps on the brakes and everything changes. Down into turn one, Elias Pan leads us through very nicely. Three wide, a little bit further back down the grid. It looks to me to be Ricky Capo, Shihab Al Habsi, and perhaps uh, Ivan Pecklin. Of course, we know at the start of the race, Ivan and uh, and uh, Ricky Capo had a bit of a touch and uh, a disadvantage, both drivers. Back to the action on screen now, though, we've got the red number seven car of uh, Sami Megantov, who has seemed to close the gap to the man in the lead of the race, who put himself uh, there by virtue of his fastest time, for, or second fastest time from qualifying. He's led since the first lap, but now the Frenchman behind him, the flying Frenchman, if you want to say, is, uh, is definitely closing in on him. The red number seven car looking menacing as it comes down the back straight with Elias Panin just managed to hold on to his lead. Elias has a one second lead at the beginning of the last lap and let's have a look what Sammy has managed to do to that lead in just the one lap as Elias very squarely on the breaking into the final corner of the circuit. Next up we got Luca Allen on screen and he's battling currently with orange uh, number 57 car. That belongs to Portugal's Fred Rico Peters. Fred's had a brilliant weekend here so far. A little, uh, a few little rookie mistakes but you can't blame him from that. It's still, uh, he's still relatively new to, to uh, Formula Racing especially in these Formula 4 cars but he's really uh, he's really pulled his socks up and he's going to be up on the top step of the podium very sure, very soon I'm sure. As they cross the start finish straight Sammy Munkatelf now only five tenths of a second off Elias Pannon so you can see the flying Frenchman definitely gaining on the fin the, the gap still a little bit too far to make anything happen, at least through turns one and two. But Elias has uh, has got a battle on his hands now, although it's not between the two championship leaders. Let's have a look back down the order and find Luke Allen. Luke Allen currently running in third position, 5.5 seconds off of uh, 
Elias Pan. You can see him in the background there. That blue car was just uh, went off screen just a moment ago. Elias Pan and trying to respond here in the first sector by doing his first, his uh, best ever first sector at 32.989. As you can see them going a little bit sideways on the entrance into turn five. That uh, that's uh, <laughs> you've got to be quite brave to do that coming through turn five. It's usually a flat out corner, which means it's got to be 180 kilometers an hour here in these cars. Down into uh, turn seven now. You can see them starting to break a little bit squarely once again. Of course, that's understandable in these conditions. Turn seven and eight, uh, they're separate corners, but you cut. You got to take them as one. You run uh, from the inside uh, apex at turn seven all the way out to the outside in the mid corner, and then back to the apex at turn eight. You don't want to touch it too much, though. It will push you off onto the outside and into the rubble with uh, on the exit of turn eight. And uh, the way the curbs are designed here. They kind of peak a little bit towards the end and they can suck you in if you're not careful. Coming through turn 10, though, Elias Sapan has still managed to maintain his lead ahead of uh, Sammy Magnetov. And further down the order, though, Frederico Peter is really giving uh, Luke Allen a run for his money here. The two drivers are uh, lapping within four tenths of a second of each other at least uh, the last time around where they both set their personal best, although that is not as fast as Moise Mishapa, who is the fastest man on track at the moment, currently riding in fifth position. Uh, one second behind Rodrigo Peter. So Fred's got to watch out now for that yellow number 13 car you can see in his mirrors. And you can see already, in fact, that uh, Fred's being forced to drive defensively to keep the Malaysian rocket right behind him. As they come down the back straight now, having just crested at turn 14, uh, Rodrigo Peter seems to be close enough to Luke Allen to get the toe. That's going to give you a two, three kilometer an hour advantage as Sammy Mergentoff in the red number seven on the left-hand side of your screens is trying to go around the outside and switch back to the inside. At turn 15, is he going to get a good enough exit seems like it's about the same pace as Elias Sapana but of course he's going to have the slipstream advantage that's uh, maybe not so much an advantage here in the wet especially with all that spray coming in for you that can't be very good for the car you can almost uh, fail to see that there's another red car behind Elias Sapana and as it now comes out to the outside line he's probably going to try and dive up the inside again no he's got enough momentum to try to go all the way around the outside he's just close enough that if he holds position here he's going to be able to dive up the inside at turn two but Elias Sapana uh, knows that move very very well and blocks out the French driver without uh, <laughs> without thinking about it twice. Coming through down into turn three now though, it seems that uh, Sammy has gotten a better exit into that corner, although the life span goes around the outside and manages to maintain more momentum down into turn four. You can see the gap between the two cards increasing slightly, so that would indicate a, a faster exit to the corner, especially since uh, Elias put himself in uh, in uh, Sammy's way and that's going to have probably caused him to back off slightly. Three wide almost there, ladies and gentlemen, now coming into down, down into turn four as it seems we missed the open take between Frederico Peters and Luca Allen. Luca Allen perhaps taking it a little bit easy here this session, uh, aware that uh, he needs to finish the race more than he needs to finish in the points. Coming down into turn six now, though, you can see Frederico Peters has uh, built a nice little leader for himself already in front of Moise Mouchard. From Moise, uh, going to have to try and close in on the Portuguese rookie as well to get back up onto the podium as soon as possible. Without, uh, without saying too much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Luke Allen may be trying to focus on the championship here this race and uh, maybe not push too hard and take any silly risks in the final race of the season. Down into turn nine, though, is Sammy Mugentoff close enough to make anything happen on Elias Sapanen? Not quite. Is Luis Mushafa close enough to make anything on Frederico Peters? Well, he thought he might have been. He had a look, and then he decided against it as we come up into turn nine now. Uphill into the right-handed turn eight, uh, turn 10. Very interesting uh, corner here at Spang International circuit leads you into turn uh, 11 then down into 12 and 13 and it uh, is kind of like the cherry on the icing as we come around now down into turn uh, 11 uh, turn 12 even Frederico Peter still in uh, fourth position or third position indeed if I'm not mistaken with Moise Michafra just behind him Moise still doing still the fastest man on track but last time around he was about five tenths off of his best time and uh, not quite uh, or almost exactly the almost exactly the same uh, uh, lap time as for Duke Peters, the two drivers separated are by only two thousandths of a second, at least in regard to their lap time. Coming down the back straight now, though, you can see Sammy Mugentov trying to get into the slipstream, get every advantage possible to close in on the finished driver. But Elias going around the outside here on the off, uh, off camber uh, corner, trying to get onto the drier line and uh, get a good exit. And you can see that that's definitely paid off because the gap between himself and Sammy does seem to have extended. At the beginning of the last lap, it was three tenths 
tenths of a second, and in just a moment we'll see the update. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, it's now seven tenths of a second, so Elias uh, responding to the challenge from the Frenchman. While Luke Allen has a look up the inside here of the yellow number 13 car belonging to Moïse Mouchafra, and Frederico Peters uh, <laughs> has a look in his mirrors to make sure nobody's going to dive up the inside at turn one. Fantastic angle here from the crane at corner two. He's going to have a have a look and see. Oh, there we go. A little bit squirrely for Moïse on the exit of turn two. That's going to compromise him, and Luke Allen already taking advantage. Got such a better exit. You can see he's going to be so close indeed to Moïse Mouchafra as we go up the hill into turn four and down. Then, uh, then into turns five and six are flat out, of course. Well, maybe not in these conditions, but usually they are flat out. Maurice Mushaffer in the yellow number 13 car. A little bit squarely looks to me as they come down into turn four now. Uh, Luke Allen, though, not, not, too, uh, not too worried about it. He's just going to sit there happily and wait for his chance or uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps concentrate on other things. As we come through turn five now, Luke Allen, the blue number three car, uh, having a look... Uh, to see where, where he can improve, I'm sure, in his lap times. Interestingly enough, uh, Sammy Megantoff just set the fastest first sector of anyone on in the race so far. Set his personal best sector in the second uh, in the second sector, and that's going to not be such a great uh, bit of news for Elias, the Pandanoria's family, to hear as uh, as the French driver tries, of course, to get onto the top step of the podium, which would be his first time here in the Formula 4 Southeast Asia Championship, and then, if I'm not mistaken, it would be his first time in any slicks and wings category. Coming through turn 10 now, though, you can see Elias a little bit uh, squirrely on the braking there, or maybe not even on the braking. He would have been accelerating at that point, so maybe uh, maybe just a little bit slippery here. Of course, you got to realize it's still very wet. You can see all the water being sprayed off by those tires as we come down into turn 12 now. Sammy had a little bit of a trouble uh, earlier on here on uh, race two, if I'm not mistaken, uh, struggling to, to, to maintain grip through uh, 12 and 13, but he definitely seems to have corrected that now for the final race of the season, the final race here this weekend uh, at the WTCR EWC race of Malaysia from the 13th to 15th of December, and of course the Malaysian home of Speed Sepang International Circuit. Coming down the back straight now, though, the red number seven car is still looking for a way to get past the red number 58. Of course, that is Sammy Mergentoff from France versus Elias Sepanen from Finland, the two drivers battling it out the entire session as Moise Mishafra has a look up the inside at turn 15. Is he going to get a better exit now? Looks like Frederico Peters manages to get back on the power just a little bit quicker. You can see the two cars, uh, the gap between the two cars extending just slightly. These cars are balanced so closely, they're all within 1 or 2% of each other, so any, any small advantage you get, any small extra bit of speed you find really makes the whole difference. And ladies and gentlemen, I just see the final lap board up on screen. I've had so much fun commentating this race and watching all of the action that I completely forgot and uh, lost track of the time. But it looks like Moise Mujaffa and Fredo Capitas have done exactly the same thing because they're still fighting right down to the a tooth and nail and right down to the check flag, I'm sure. And Sammy, uh, Sammy Megantoff and Elias Pan, I'm sure, going to do exactly the same thing. Sammy going to have a look up the inside here? No, he's going to hold on as Moïse Mushafa goes up the inside. No, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to switch back to the outside. Now he's going to switch back into the inside line again. No, he doesn't. He goes outside, touches the rumble strip, and that seems to have been a slower line there through there for Moïse Mushafa. But maybe he knows something that we don't. Coming into turn five now, though, uh, Frederico Peters leading quite uh, substantially, though, from Moïse Mushafa, as I said. The gap, you know, it goes back and forth, but you can see Fred going a little bit sideways there. Uh, Moise taking a, a further outside line, for perhaps trying to find a drier line as we come uh, down into turn nine. Now, Moise Mushafra and uh, Fred Rico Peters still battling it out for third position, and Luke Allen just behind them rounding out the top five. Let's have a, a run back to the front of the grid where I believe Elias Apanin and uh, and Sammy Ogantoff are still fighting for first position. Yes, they are. You can see how close they are. It looks like they're about to touch the front wing to the rear crash box. They are very close indeed, ladies and gentlemen. You can see uh, Sammy looking everywhere, going a little bit sideways again on the exit of turn 10, down into turn 11. Can he try and make something happen here? Does seem to get back on the power a little bit faster coming out of turn 11, down into turn 12. They're going to be neck and neck indeed, ladies and gentlemen. So it's going to come down to the last corner on the last lap of the last race of the 2019 Formula 4 Southeast Asia Championship, fueled, of course, as always by Petron. Coming down, oh no, ladies and gentlemen, Sammy has pushed just a little bit too hard. He's gone really far outside. That may allow him get 
to get a higher top speed, but he's just scrubbed too much time coming through that uh, penultimate corner. And there, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for me, that may just mean the last pan is going to win the final race of the season. Having a look in his mirror there, just up in. But uh, at the moment, at least, Sammy just a little bit too far back. Is he going to try up the inside? He is indeed. Elias going to go all the way around the outside. Let's have a look to the to the right-hand side of your screens and see what's happening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Elias Pan manages to hold on to it. Sammy gave it his best, tried up the inside, but Elias just uh, closed the door, having learned his lesson from race two, I believe, where Sammy managed to come back on him on that corner. It was a really fun weekend and I just want to thank Peter Thompson for the opportunity. It was quite a challenging weekend because it was I haven't raced F4 before and then also it was in the rain which made it very difficult with the wet and the dry conditions combined as I don't have much main circuit experience in the rain but lots of fun so I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was really fun, especially the last race. There was a lot of rain, we couldn't see anything. Turn one I break by Ingsting. It was fun, got a good line. And at turn two I saw a couple of cars almost lose control. And uh, just drove my heart out, enjoyed a lot. And it was fun racing with Ivana and everyone else. The guys really enjoyed it. And I'm next year hoping to try the F4 Southeast Asia. Yeah, it was a great weekend. Cool weekend. Uh, weather where was changing a lot. So uh, yeah, a lot of experience. Uh, that I took and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, was a, it was a good preparation for, uh, for next year. Uh, next year I will race in a French F4 championship, so uh, yeah, with the same car. So yeah, it was a great weekend. Feel the rush Metron F4! With that, really it's the end of the race and unfortunately the end of the season. We're back soon in just a few months time, so be sure to tune back in. But for me, Aaron Thompson, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next year.